it's Sutton up overtime. And that's the way it was on February the 27th. The Arrows beating Baltimore in Maryland. Sudden death by a score of 7-6. to six. Tonight, live from the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, it's the New York Arrows, champions of the major indoor soccer league. Tonight, the Arrows will attempt to detonate the Baltimore Blast. The New York Arrows are brought to you by... Budweiser, for all you do, this buzz for you. Chemical Bank, the chemistry just right at Chemical. Arby's featuring the new delicious deli specialty sandwiches from Arby's Roast Beef Restaurant. Betamax featuring a full line of video cassette recorders from Sony, the one and only. Ultra Seal, the ultimate in automotive protection products sold nationally by new car dealers only. And Skull, Copenhagen, and Happy Days. Moist, smokeless tobaccos. A pinch is all it takes. And a good evening and welcome to the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. I'm Spencer Ross along with Roy Messing. And tonight, game three of this 1981-82 season between these two clubs. And as you saw, the Arrows were hard-pressed to win that one in Baltimore. The game before, though, went to Baltimore quite easily, Roy. Six to three, so this is a tough team. Well, that makes it the deciding game tonight. They're one apiece. Two very tough games. Baltimore beat New York soundly in Baltimore the first time. New York came back and won a heartbreaker right at the end as we saw the second time. This should be a very tough game tonight. Kenny Cooper's put together a heck of a club, and Roy, uh, of course, uh, empathizes with anybody who was a former goalkeeper, and Kenny Cooper was a heck of a goalkeeper, but he's put together a good blend of a great deal of talent, and I think when you start talking about Baltimore, you have to talk about the man who wears number 14, Joey Fink. Joey's having a tremendous year. He's played in the league all, all three years, and this is fourth. He's been a top goal scorer. He's moved into third place among the all-time leading scorers. He's very much on top of his game, and he's going to be somebody to look for. Speaking of Kenny, the team has lost seven of its last 11, but they are a team that is definitely in the fight. They are sitting in third place right now in the Eastern Division, and they still got a shot at catching second place Pittsburgh. And tonight, it's going to be an all-Long Island cast and goal. Shot messing for the Arrows, and down the other end, another Long Island. Well, I'm no one to argue. I think New York has produced the best goalkeepers in the league. And Sepp Gottenheimer and Shep, of course, are two very fine examples. This will be a very tough game. Baltimore certainly a good team, but definitely in a slump and looking to come out of it tonight. The Arrows have won nine of their last ten, but this is a big one tonight. A contingent of fans have come up from Baltimore. The response to that franchise down there has just been incredible. We were there a few weeks ago, and the, they just packed the place to the rafters. They had sold out that game over a month and a half before the night that it was to be played. The fans love it in Baltimore. They're supporting their team all their way, all the way, and they're looking for them to do well in the playoffs coming up. Big game for the Arrows tonight as they take on the Baltimore Blast. Arrows will be here this Sunday also to go against the Jersey Rockets. Head out and see New York Arrows soccer. And right now, sit back, relax, and we'll get back with the opening kickoff to tonight's battle between the Arrows and the Baltimore Blast right after these words. Spencer Ross and Roy Messing back here at the Nassau Coliseum as we look at Shep Messing, who will be going into goal once again tonight for the New York Arrows. Uh, Zali Toth turned in an excellent performance as the Arrows beat Buffalo right here uh, on Wednesday night. You see Shep's record, 16-5, 4.67. His goals against average down the other end. Seth Gottenheimer, the goalkeeper out of Long Island University, a native of Queens, New York. He was third in the league last year in goal. This year, throughout most of the year, he's taken a back seat to Keith Van Aaron, but uh, Kenny Cooper has been utilizing him quite a bit as of late. And you see he's turned the trick, a record of nine up and three down. The referees, Bill Maxwell on the left, Don Winshank is on the right, and we are set for the opening kickoff, and Peter Barilich at center field to kick it off now for the Baltimore Blast. The Arrows will be going with Billy Gazonis, Omar Gomez, Steve Jungle. Back in defense, Juan Carlos Machio has the ball, and this is Renato Chila. 
We're underway at the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum with New York Arrows soccer, and the ball is played on the far side by Jim Pollahan, who drops it back now to Danny Counts, number eight, and it comes to Gottenheimer. Up to Peter Barilich. Barilich, one of the all-stars in this major indoor soccer league, gives it to Mike Stankovic, shaved by Messing out in front, Billy Gazonis clears it aside, but it comes back to center field, where it's taken by Dan Counts. Counts' pass goes to Ryan Machia comes up with it. Bad ball by Machia. And Baltimore now in control. Baltimore, as I mentioned, has lost seven of its last 11, but a force to be reckoned with. And the New York Arrows well aware of it. Counts trying to feed it ahead, broken up by Machia. This is Gomez. Machia goes down the right, tries to feed ahead to Jungle, broken up by Counts, and taken by Mike Stankovic, number five. Played a minute five, scoreless game, Baltimore with the ball, this is Peter Barlich, number 22. Paul Crosley. Try to get it to Counts, who was coming in from his defensive position. But Gia goes, quickly beat for the ball by Joey Fink. We notice Counts going forward, Counts a defender, but normally Counts is a striker, so that gives Baltimore a little bit of flexibility. Going here's, forward. Here's the man, Joey Fink, 44 goals in the season. He can put him home, sixth in the Major Indoor Soccer League in scoring, and the Arrows counter immediately with Omar Gomez, but a bad ball taken back by the Baltimore Black. 13-12 left in this first quarter. And Stankovic slows it down as Baltimore makes a change on the fly here. Dan counts with the ball. Kenny Cooper getting a new unit out there. That'll be a foul right out in front, and it'll go against Baltimore's Pat Ercoli, number 11. It's a handball, Patty, trying to disguise it. Chest trap, but he got a hand on it to bring it down. The referee saw it. This is Gomez, Arrows have yet to make a change. Stan Karasi is out there now, number eight. That's the first game made by Coach Don Popovich. Comes over to Karasi. This is Gomez. And we'll get a foul. It will go against Baltimore. Nick Mangione picks it up. And Omar Gomez, none the worse for wear. Well, let's check it. It may go against the arrow. No, no. Against Baltimore, an obstruction foul. New York Arrow. Against Gomez, three, three. and it'll start with a restart for New York. Karasi's first goal, there he is on the right side of your screen, came at St. Louis in the game you saw here on Channel 9, WOR-TV. This is Jungo. It's a goal that won the game. That's a handball that time against Pat Ercoli. 12-31 left in this first quarter. Scoreless game. Arrows, the only quarter that they really have problems in is quarter number one. They have been outscored during the course of the season in the first quarter. This is Karassi ahead to Gomez. Karassi trying to move around Nick Mangione, number 19. Jungle with the ball now. Back heels it, but Mangione breaks it up. And here comes Baltimore. Crosley. Messing couldn't hold on to it. Gomez comes up with it. Shep had some trouble. The ball coming off the boards like that has a lot of spin and it's very difficult to handle. Here is Gomez. Jungle. Good wall pass to Gomez and the give and go. The shot save and a good one by Gottenheimer. Great job by Gomez to get open on his right foot and Seppi had to reach out with one hand and did a fine job holding on to it. 11.35, left quarter number one. Scoreless game. Here is Mangione. Puts it in front. Near the side by Val Tupchuk. Ball is loose out in front of the goal. Paul Crosley puts it home. The Arrows gave it away. And Pat Ercoli fed Crosley. And Crosley beats Shep Messing easily. A good opportunity here, but we see Tuksha had pinched in. As the ball comes across to Pat Ercoli, Tuksha, normally the right defender, comes in to cover, leaves Crossley open. He goes high as Shep goes down to cover the goal. You see Shep come out to break out the first play, coming off the boards. Baltimore getting some good opportunities early off those boards. This is what started it here. A bad pass back from Karasi goes right to Patty, and that's what left Tuksha open in the middle. Crossley open on the back post, goes high. A good goal for Baltimore. And the blast leads it one nothing for Paul Crossley. His 10th goal of the season. There he is in the center of your screen. Baltimore with the ball again. Peter Barrelich, number two. 
Beating it ahead to Jim Polahan. Comes the barrel at you again. His shot blocked down in front. Baltimore in control. Mike Stankovic with it now. 11 minutes left in this first quarter. This is Barrelage. Polahan. Stankovic. And Guttenheimer has it. Number 10, This is Joey Fink, number 14. Val took you right with him. There are times when Tuchia appears to be plotting and a little bit slow, but he might be one of the strongest players in the league, and he has great speed. That's what gives him that appearance. He's so strong, so big, and he's a very deceptive player. That's why he beats a lot of people going forward. Tuchia in the last game scored two goals, and you might see Val go forward a lot tonight with that extra bit of confidence. Here's Paul Kitson getting it to Mark Liverich, number 10. Liverich with a left foot shot. Guttenheimer got his hand on it, and it's cleared aside by Mike Stankovic. Baltimore counter-attacking nicely. Good ball by Barrett. Over to Joey Finkel. Fire. Save. Messi on the rebound. It comes back up, and the Arrows have the ball once again. This is Gino Strenison. Gets in. Shot blocked by Mike Stankovic, but kept in play by Strenison, who chips it up off the wall, and it's played by Danny Kopp. Arrows beginning to put some pressure on, and Fernando Clavillo will chase it down with 9.35 left in this first quarter. Baltimore leading it on Paul Crosley's 10th goal of the season, one to nothing. Here's Mark Leverage trying to move around Peter Barrelich, and that'll be a foul on Barrelich. There is the boss, the coach, Don Popovich of the New York Arrows. Needless to say, the most successful coach in the MISL. He's never lost a title. He's shooting for his fourth straight. Gene Strenitzer breaks that one up, and it comes back to midfield. It's played by Baltimore's John Collins. Out in front, the shot by Ercoli, and the save on the rebound. Crosley, Messing, trying to go for it. Crosley, Ercoli, has it home. Crosley and Ercoli. Do it again, and this time it is Ercoli who comes up with a goal. Great hustle and great effort by number 11 and number 16. I won't take credit away from Baltimore. This is a good Baltimore goal, but a lot of confusion in the New York back. You see a good save by Shep here, but the pass back from Catacolitas. Neither player knew who was going to get it, left the player open on the back post. And Pat Ercoli sticks it home. He had nothing to miss. He had a full open goal. You see it start here, try a bad clearance. Crossley gets a piece of it, a save by Shep here. Now the mix up. Shep going for the ball. And Catacolides gets an extra touch on it. That caused some confusion, drew everybody to one side. Left an open net for Pat Erkley. Nothing Shep can do there. 2 nothing, Baltimore. Beautiful feed by Crosley as he just chipped it up into the air and Ercoli was all alone. Here's Mark Liverich coming back for the Arrows and now trailing by a score of 2 to nothing. 8.35 left in this first quarter of play. Baltimore on goals by Crosley and Ercoli, leading it 2-0. Here's Mangione going for it. Ball is loose in front. Taken by Jungle. This is Gene Strenison. Nikitovic goes for it, but it's chipped back into the ball around, and Ercoli has it. And he drops it off for Guttenheimer. This is Gene Strenison. Steve Jungle, Peter Barrett right with him, but it takes a Baltimore bounce. Seven minutes, 24 seconds left in the first quarter. This is Joey Fink now for Baltimore. Shot, Machia got a piece of it, and Messing was there with the save. Goalkeepers talk to their teammates. Shep at this point is not talking. He is screaming. Yeah, that, he's very upset. The midfielder is not coming back to cover the extra man. Baltimore coming forward freely with three and four players. And New York only back with two defenders, giving a lot of open shots and a lot of trouble for Shep. 
He's trying to encourage the midfielder to come back and come with the running midfielder from Baltimore. Arrows trailing 2-0, 6.52 left in this first quarter. Here's Billy Gazonis, number six for the New York Arrows. Counts nearly broke it up. Nikitovic fires just wide. Rebound. Sheila puts it in front. Jungle try to get the shot off. Barilich was right on his back. Steve calling for the foul. The whistle never blew. Six and a half left first quarter. Two nothing. Baltimore. Peter Barilich with the ball. Baltimore five and a half games behind the Arrows. Arrows have been a hot team. Baltimore has been cold as of late. Arrows have won nine of their last ten. Baltimore losing seven of its last eleven. Distributed nicely out by Jeff Messing, but Peter Barilich cut in front of him once again. Barilich not only cuts in front of you, he lets you know he has an elbow. Barilich is a very physical player. Sometimes he gets away with it, sometimes he doesn't. A look at Ken Cooper, a fine goalkeeper in his time, and doing a tremendous job coaching the Baltimore Blast. This is Nikitovic now for New York. Counts is on his back. Gazonis back to Machia. 5.45 left first quarter. New York Arrows soccer right here from the Nassau Coliseum. Plenty more happening this Sunday afternoon. The Arrows will go against their cross river rival, so to speak, the Hudson River, the Jersey Rockets. This is Machia now for New York. Tachila. Billy Gazonis drops for Gomez. Counts right with him. Back to Gazonis. To Jungo. Jungo try to get the shot off of his block and Joey Fink has a one-on-one -on -one with Ron Carlos Machia. Fink makes the move, doesn't get much in the shot as Chila came over to help out. And here's the outlet pass coming over to Jungle. Gives to Gomez. Jungle moves toward the net. Gomez puts it in front and the shot is chipped up into the crowd by Karasi. Good feed by Gomez. 4.50 left in the first quarter of play. We'll take a break at the Nassau Coliseum with a score. The Baltimore Blast 2 and the New York Arrows nothing. Seb Guttenheimer in goal for Baltimore. His team leading it by a score of two to nothing. Now Tuxer gets his head on it. This is Karasi. And chased down by Bob McEvan, number six. And that'll go as a handball against McEvan. Arrows will put it into play. Gomez. Nobody there except Pat Urkeley. This is Tuxia. Mangion didn't like what Val did, and he let him know about it. Well, Val came in very hard in the tackle, and Mangion didn't waste any time. The next opportunity he had, when the ball came down, he gave elbow a stiff elbow to Tuxia in the chest. Referee Bill Maxwell. There's uh, Coach Don Popovich getting in a couple of words. This is Jungle. Tuxia. Dukcha has it taken away, and that foul will go against Val. Ball Crosley took it away from him. Here is Val Tuxia, member of the Eastern Division MISL All-Stars. Urkeley, number 11, 407, left first quarter. Arrows trail 2 nothing. Taken away by Karasi, the jungle. Good ball of Gomez, puts it back in front, but McAvan tips it up for goalkeeper Gettenheimer. You know, you talk about Jungle, the great goal scoring. He has 49 assists this year. He's three off the league record. Held by Jorgen Christensen. Good ball to Urkeley. The shot sails wide by Crosley. Urkeley and Crosley have been the story thus far in this first quarter. This is Jungle having trouble with McAvan. And we finally do get a whistle. Foul will go against McAvan for tripping. Jungle saying, hey, Bill, call it maybe a little sooner. You saw Jungle motion for the two-minute. He pushes off there, but there was some serious pushing there before on the boards, and then two hard tackles off the ball, taking him off the ball right there. Jungle wanted a two-minute, but I don't think there's any way. Referee right on the spot. It's certainly a foul, but not a two-minute. Here is Gomez playing it off the wall. Comes back out to Tuxia. 
325 left first quarter. Two for Baltimore, zero for the New York Arrows. Fernando Clavillo, number 14. Clavillo shot, sails up into the crowd. McAvan didn't get a foot on it, so it'll be a Baltimore ball. Kenny Cooper likes to change in total. And there you take a look at the upcoming uh, Arrow home games this Sunday. The Arrows up against the New Jersey Rockets. And you can get to see this uh, Philip Baltimore team once again on April the 10th. That's a Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock. Philadelphia will be here. And the Pittsburgh team on the 25th of this month, the Pittsburgh Spirit. And they're the team in second place currently right now. And that number for ticket information, area code 516 the number is N-Y-A-R-R-O-W. Get out and see the New York Arrows for their remaining home game during this 1981-82 season. And of course, the playoffs right on the horizon. And there'll be plenty of that action coming your way. Here's Liberage getting it to Karasi. Two minutes, 50 seconds left first quarter. Arrows are trailing it by a score of two to nothing on goals by Crosley and Urkeley. Here's Karasi. Stand shot is blocked out in front by Stankovic. Baltimore counterattacking now. Joey Fink goes for it, but touch the beats into the ball and gets it back to Messi. We got a second time. We got a look at Stan Karasi intercepting a pass. He's a very experienced player, and he almost plays like a free safety in the midfield. He'll wait and wait for the pass, and then just as the man swings the foot, he'll step in and read the play. And he's got great control once he does take the ball away. He knows where everybody is and sets things up very well. Karasi's a recent addition to the team, but he played in the league two years ago and a top, top player, world-class international. Here is Gomez. Good move by Omar, hit the crossbar on the rebound. It comes back out to Gomez. Had Gottenheimer beat that time. Tuxia feeding it ahead. And let's see, the foul will go against Baltimore, and it's going to be for two minutes. Jim Palahan's going to go off for two, and the Arrows will have the man advantage. Take a look at it here. We'll see what Palace does. That's, that's full forecheck, I think it's called. Although we don't call it that in soccer. He just blocked him out of the way. Totally beaten by Tuchin. Just knocked him to the ground. Certainly a two-minute penalty. Peter oh, Barilich goes to the penalty box, and the Arrows will have the man advantage. Something they've been very successful at. 27 goals and 63 attempts for 43%. But Baltimore plays well when they're down a man. They've given up goals only 20 times in 79 attempts. It's just about 25%. So here are the arrows with a man advantage. Gomez shot by Machia is blocked by Bob McAvan and the arrows will start it up again. A minute 40 left on the penalty to Barlett. This is Gomez to Strenicer. Machia Back out to Strenicer. Minute 25 left in the penalty. Gomez trying to tee it up and fire it. It was blocked and played by Machia. Nikitovic back to Machia. This is Strenicer. Gomez puts it in front of the jungle, just trying to flick it on, and the save was made. And Guntenheimer just lofts it up into the air. With a minute three remaining on the penalty, 2-0 Baltimore, as you see it. Arrows here with a man advantage, Nikitovic to Strenicer. That's Gomez on the right. Omar gives to Jungle. Good wall pass to Gomez, but broken up at the final possible second. Machia's shot is cleared out, and it'll still be Arrows' ball. With 46 seconds left in the penalty, 41 seconds left in this first quarter. New York obviously at, a, at an advantage with an extra man, but they're starting to play a little bit better, starting to find the passes. They were a little bit off. Everything was a bit tentative, certainly after the two Baltimore goals. Now they seem to be playing with a little more confidence and back into the game. This is a good way to do it, a man up. Here is Gomez. Try to put it in front. Bad ball right there. You were talking about the good passes and what bad one by Gomez that time. 18 seconds left in the quarter. Strenicer takes it away, gets it to Gomez. Omar off the wall, gets it over to Jungle, back to Nikitovic. Eight seconds left in the quarter. Strenicer, five, four, three. Arrows may not get a shot off. Nikitovic to Jungle. There's the horn, just as he fires. And Guttenheimer comes up with a save. And Jungle with his hands on hips. 
walks back to the bench. A tough first quarter for the New York Arrows. Goals by Crosley and Hercule, and the Baltimore Blast leads it after one by a score of two to nothing. At the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, Spencer Ross along with Roy Messing. We played one quarter here, and the Baltimore Blast leading the Arrows by a score of two to nothing. Great persistence here by the Baltimore team as they fight the Arrows for the ball. Well, when it becomes a scramble, everybody gets involved, and Tuxia got pulled in, left crossly open on the back post. Good open goal. Shep went down to cover as much as he could, and he went high. The second goal here starts on the left side. Shep coming out to cover goal, goes high. Total confusion here now off the boards. This will, we see Shep make a save. Catacolides doesn't know whether to play it back or whether Shep's going to take it first time. And now the confusion comes out here. Open net. Beautiful ball lifted to the back post to Pat Erkeley. No, no room to miss. Sticks it in the back of the net. Well, that time it was Crosley to Erkeley. The first time it was uh, Erkeley to Crosley. For each of them, their 10th goals of the season. And that's the way we stand now. Baltimore 2, the New York Garros nothing. Fernando Clavillo now for the New York Garros. Barilich is out of the penalty box. Teams are now at full strength. Arrows unable to capitalize on the man advantage. This is Clavillo, number 14 for New York. 14-40 left in this first half of play with the Arrows trailing it 2 to nothing. Good to have Fernando Clavillo back after the knee injury. Came back very quickly, had surgery on the knee after a serious injury early in the season. Came back in a short amount of time and he's playing again, playing well. Barilich back healing it to nobody except uh, the New York Arrows, uh, George Catacolita. Jungle goes for it. Instead, it's taken by Baltimore. And Mike Stankovich has it, number five. We're early in the second quarter. It is 2-0 Baltimore. This is Joey Fink now for the Baltimore Blast. Dan Counts, number eight. Stankovic. Ball gets it. Tackles the ball away. Tries to feed it ahead to Jungle. And Gottenheimer makes the calculated move. And it works out to his favor. This is Kitson. Kitson tried to squeeze it through to Gazonis. Kitson still going for the ball. Down he goes into the wall with Stankovic right with him. And Kitson might have hit that right leg up against the boards. Got to look at it on the replay. This is a dangerous foul as he comes in from behind. It wouldn't be so dangerous in the middle of the field, but because of the boards by the edge, that is called boarding. He calls it a penalty, uh, obviously a foul, but not a two-minute penalty. But perhaps near the boards, that could warrant a two-minute. This program intended for the private use of our audience, any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this event without the express written consent of the Arrows Communications Corporation is strictly prohibited. Paul Kitson is up, but he is holding on to that left uh, left thigh, I guess, is where uh, well, he got hit Paul from got behind, so he must have banged it up against the wall. Kitson puts it into play. Gottenheimer just punched it out. Barilich chases it down, number 22. Katakalidis right with him. Kitson, Barilich right with him. Play on, says referee Maxwell. Kitson with the ball, 13-18 left in the half. Arrows trailing by a score of two to nothing. Gazonis to Jungle. Dan Counts uh, practically dancing with the Jungle. The crowd didn't like it, but there was nothing serious happening. He was just holding on, just squaring off shoulder to shoulder. Erkeley getting it back to Counts. His shot is blocked by Clavillo. And Clavillo colliding in the boards with Joey Fink. Fink comes right back after him, and that'll be a penalty, and it will send Joey Fink to the box for two minutes. Well, Fink didn't like what Clavillo did to him, and perhaps out of frustration or anger, he came back and went right after Fernando. Well, it's called retaliation. Outdoors on a big field, sometimes you can get away with it, especially when the ball is somewhere else. But indoors with the referee right there and with the ball at the player's feet, there's no way. You see a hard collision here. Very fair. You see the referee windshake in the box, motions to play on, and now Joey comes in and just boom, hip check, takes him right out. 
certainly a two-minute penalty. Got to look at it from a different angle. We saw that we missed the first foul. Now, you see Fink doesn't go for the ball. He just comes in at, at knee height and takes him out. Never went for the ball. Dangerous foul. There's Bob Baldwin looking at Fernando. Remember, he has just come back from knee surgery. When you get, when you have a, an operation of that sort and the leg is in, incapacitated for a long period of time, you lose a lot of muscle tension, a lot of muscle tone, and it takes a long time to bring it back. That way, that way, that thigh is a little bit weaker than it normally is and more susceptible to injury. Arrows with their second man advantage now. This is Nikitovic. Brings it back to Karasi. Good ball to Chila. This shot deflects up off the glass into the crowd. That'll be an arrow's corner kick off the Baltimore defender. We see Seth Gottenheimer setting up his defense. He squares off, covers the near post, put one, puts one man in front of the ball, and everybody else around the arc covering the other New York attackers. Our last telecast, the Arrows trailed 3 0 in St. Louis, and now it is 2 to 1 as Karasi puts on the goal off the feed by Renato Chila. And the initial Arrows goal in St. Louis came also off a corner kick, and here is Karasi with his third goal of the season. Karasi makes it look easy, but this is a bullet. Chila's going for goal, and Karasi has to get his full inside of his foot on it. Boom, and no chance for Sepp Gottenheim. It's from point blank range. What a goal from Karasi, and a great feed from Chila. Tremendous goal. Man advantage goal for the New York Arrows. Stan Karasi on the assist by Renato Chila. And it is now 2-1. to one. This is Palahan going for the ball. Karasi comes up with it for New York. Ahead to Liberich. Liberich losing to Stankovic and Barilich feeds it ahead now to Stankovic. Good sliding tackle, though, but it was a handball. Nevertheless, good play by Chila because there was a man alone in the slot had that ball gotten through. Well, this goal is the medicine that New York needed. They really weren't into the, in the game up until this point. The crowd wasn't really into it, but one goal makes all the difference in the world. Now the crowd is with them and they're starting to play. 11.55 left in the first half. Arrows trailing now by a score of 2-1. to one. Gottenheimer, who has himself a heck of an arm. This is Liberich to Kitson. Tries to put it in front, and it is broken up by Stankovic. Dan counts ahead to Palahan. This is Joey Fink. Overruns the ball, and the latest uh, addition of the New York Arrows, Mike Rayovich, feeds it up ahead. Rayovich wears number 22. This is Karasi, number eight, to Liberich. Gottenheimer. It went right through his arms, and fortunately the wall was there. Otherwise, this is a 2-2 game, and we got a penalty coming up here. Two-minute penalty for delay of game. We see the referee Maxwell motion delay of game. When the ball is cleared intentionally into the crowd, we see it start with a bullet left foot from Liberich, and now it squirts through Gottenheimer's legs and is cleared off the line by Dan Counts. The referee decided it was cleared intentionally into the into the stands, and that's delay of game, two-minute penalty. Gives New York another man advantage power play. And you saw Paul Kitson raise his hand up with the V sign, meaning two. Well, New York had been called this penalty in the previous game against Buffalo, and they argued it very vehemently but here tonight the same very similar situation cleared by Baltimore New York knows what the call is because it was against them last time two minutes well the arrows who trailed it two to nothing scoring moments ago on a man advantage and now with another opportunity with Dan counts in the penalty box this is Karasi Nikitovic try to get it to Jungle a little bit too far and Joey Fink drops it back to Gottenheimer Ahead to Fink. A minute and a half left on the penalty. And that an offside pass. Joey Fink uh, fired that from his own zone over the opposite red line in the air. And that is the MISL offside rule. This is Karasi to Gomez. A minute 25 left on the penalty. The Arrows with a man advantage. They're one for two in man advantage situations this evening. Karasi to Nikitovic. Jungle. Double team. Palahan clears it off the board. Karasi back to Nikitovic. 
It's shot off the glass. Joey Fink has ball and space and moves it up. 55 seconds left to the penalty. Joey Fink killing some good time. Here is Gomez. Arrows have a three on two. Karasi to jungle. Chipped it up. And it just stood off the outside post. Steve Jungle has great power. Super finesse move right there. He really had nothing to lose. I don't know if he was going for goal. He knew he had very little angle. He just sent it across. Gomez was racing in on the far post. Go, guys. The kind that ended up in between the best of two worlds. He couldn't get the goal from that angle. It hit the post, and it was too close to the goal for Gomez to get ahead on. It is 2-1, Baltimore, with 9.45 left in the first half of play. This is Nikitovic. Locked up into the crowd, off the leg of Barrett, and it'll still be Arrow's ball on the corner kick. Dragon Nikitovic, that is Peter Barrett, number 22. First game in Baltimore, which uh, the blast one six three Barrett had two goals that night. Here is Tuchu. Good left foot shot, Gottenheimer with a save. Rebound, Gomez goes for it. Barilic comes up with it. Gomez collides with him. And that foul will go against Omar oh, Gomez. Oh. Peter Barilic talking to assistant referee Don Woodshank. Go on now. Tuxia in a foot race with Barilich, and Val wins it, but Barilich takes it away, drops it in front to Mangio, great save by Metzen. Fantastic, Sheck was all the way down on the ground trying to cover for Barilich when it was sent to the middle and he had to cover up. Jungle shot is way wide, and Mangio drops it back for Guttenheimer. Ahead to Barilich. This is Dan Counts. Messing gets it out ahead to Gomez with 8.45 left in the first half. Down goes Gomez. Barilich is going off. It is getting rough in Baltimore. Hit for the fourth time with a penalty. Val Tuxia was creamed near midfield off camera by Dan Katz, and Val is holding on to his head. Something definitely happened to Val, but this is the foul that was called. You see Gomez's skill, he goes at him. And look at Barrett, it's totally beaten, just takes him down. Very serious foul. I would think at this point it would deserve a warning. Let's listen to Bill Maxwell. There is Tuxia, and I had my eye on it. It was a fierce collision between Val and Dan Counts, and Dan Counts went down, and as far as Tuxia was concerned, he kind of landed on the field in a swan dive. Well, Tuxia is okay. There's Kenny Cooper on the bench, wanting to send McAvan out. Baltimore once again down a man. This is with 8.44 left in the half. Needless to say, this is a very difficult situation for Baltimore. Not only are they playing a man down, not only does it set it up as we get a look at Barrelich in the box. For New York, many opportunities to score goals with this man up for so much time. But it's so hard for Ken Cooper. His, his shifts are way off. These guys are all doing double time on the field because they're all, it's a special man on team. And it throws the whole line off for Baltimore. They're going to be very tired at the end of this period. Here is Gomez putting it in front and broken up by Palahan. Joey Fink chases it now. Got Machia in front of him. I think just trying to kill some time. That'll be a foul against Omar Gomez. This is Fink's main function in the man down situation. He's a very gangly player. He does well holding on to the ball. Very skillful and does, does a good job killing time. Eight minutes, 10 seconds left in the half. A minute 22 remaining on the penalty to Barilich, who is off for the second time tonight. Here's Nikitovic, his shot blocked by Mangione. 
And it'll be a corner kick coming up for the Arrows. A minute 16 left on the penalty to Peter Barilich of Baltimore. 2-1, the blast leading the Arrows. New York is going to have to show a little bit of more, a little bit more patience in this power play. Work for the open shot. This is Karasi. Remember, Arrows here this Sunday against New Jersey, 2 o'clock. Get out and see the New York Arrows against the Jersey Rockets. Mangio made that save. Jungle tips it in. Steve Jungo got it on the bounce and just chipped it home. And on the man advantage situation, the Arrows, for the second time tonight, have scored and were tied at two. Jungo was waiting on the back post all this time. Gomez made some super moves to get into the positions and now takes a shot off the boards. Baltimore defenders cover up. Steve's waiting on the back post. Gets it down to the turf and makes it bounce under Seth Gottenheimer and up into the top of the net. We see great pump fake by Gomez to get around Palahan here. And now the shot off the missile sign for the rebound. Everybody drawing in. He chips it over. Jungle comes in, hits it down to the turf and bounces it up into the goal. Great power play goal for New York. Kenny Cooper right here has elected to call a timeout. And as you were saying, part of the reason for it has to be that he just wants his troops to regroup and get themselves a little bit of a rest. And we'll get back here at the Coliseum. The Arrows have come back. We're all even now. New York 2, Baltimore 2 with 7.45 remaining in the first half. New York Arrows on their second man advantage goal of the evening have tied things up here against Baltimore at two and two. Here's Barilich now for the blast. They've got to regroup. They had the momentum and eight minutes of penalties have kind of taken it away from them. Certainly did. Actually, we have to give Baltimore some credit. Four power plays and only two goals. They've really weathered the storm pretty well. But the, the, the um, attitude of the game has changed. Certainly New York back in at 2-2 in their home court. It's a different situation for Baltimore now. And as I mentioned, it's very difficult for the coach. The lines were all messed up. Guys on for double shifts and all players very tired. I want to point out what you're saying, Roy. If you give up two out of four every time, you're not doing well. But when it comes in a span of about 20 minutes, you are doing well. Absolutely. To play a man down for that length of time in such a short period of time is very, very difficult, very hard on the players. Here is Paul Kitson now for the Arrows. Callahan played it off the wall and Counts drops it back. Arrows all leaving at two and two. Juan Carlos Machia to Gene Streniser. Back to Machia. George Catacolitis, six and a half remaining in the first half. Arrows two, Baltimore blast two. This is Machia. Kitson went for it. He collided with Stankovic. Stankovic will pick up the foul. Paul Kitson, who has played a good part of the season with a broken arm. That's right, he suffered a broken arm and a fall and has been playing with it since. Look at Don Popovich on the bench. That's a broken arm you cannot get in California because it doesn't snow and you have no ice. Liverage, and that's what happened. One of those snow accidents. Out in front, Liverage. Oh, Mark had an open net and he fired it high. Got under the ball and chipped it up into the crowd. So we remain tied at two and two. It's not a bad idea from Leverage. He did have the whole net, but he wanted it on his left foot, and he waited till Gottenheimer went down to the turf and tried to lift it to the high near corner. He's got a little bit too much under it. Well, Baltimore has called another timeout here. Well, either we said something wrong yeah. before. Only allowed one per half. So apparently that uh, last timeout was one that was called by the New York Arrows. Opportunity to remind you that the, the Arrows have four more home games coming up here, regular season home games at the Nassau Coliseum. The New Jersey Rockets will be in this Sunday afternoon. Get out and see New York Arrows soccer this Sunday right here at the Coliseum. Baltimore will be back uh, next Saturday night. That's a week from tomorrow. On the 18th, Philadelphia will be in town. And then the Pittsburgh Spirit on the 25th of this month. Last time Pittsburgh was here was a, an impressive victory for them in overtime as they rebounded from a four-goal deficit in the second half, tied the arrows, and won it in the extra session. For ticket information, call that number, 516-NY-A-R-R-O-W. Don Popovich talking with his troop. Chef Messing with his back to you. Paul Kitson on the right. 
Well, it does make sense that Popovich had called the first time out. He had so many power plays, he had to make sure his team was going to get a goal, and he wanted to regroup and let the players know how he wanted it handled. Now Baltimore, late in the second half, as we get a look at Popovich on the bench, back in the game. Baltimore needs a timeout just to regroup, to set their strategy for the rest of the half. They really don't know how to play the game at this, at this point. They were a little bit lost, coming off a good job killing the penalties, and now they have to get back in the game and start playing. We have 6.09 remaining in the first half. We're tied at 2-2. Two and two. <laughs> Pat Urkeley taken down from behind by Fernando Clavillo. And the Arrows will be a man shy for the first time this evening. We get a look at it. Urkeley gets by on the boards, and now he's beaten him completely. He's headed for goal. Clavillo just clipped his ankle out from underneath him, and since he was headed for goal, that tripping penalty does warrant a two-minute. Clavillo heads to the box. The Arrows have surrendered, but 19 goals and 59 attempts against a situation in which they're down a man. Baltimore has been able to score only 26% of the time. There's a good look at Fernando Clavillo, who goes into the penalty box for two minutes. Baltimore with 18 goals and 69 attempts. The Arrows now with 29 goals and 67 attempts, about 45%. So you see the difference there. But Baltimore kills off penalties better than the Arrows do. Baltimore works on this a lot. They work on the man down and on the man up. Urkeley goes for it. This is Barrelet trying to put it in front. Messi went for the ball, and Barrelet picks up the foul. It'll be an Arrows goal kick. Very difficult ball for Shep because it was coming in out of the air and it didn't get to the ground until it reached the goal box. Oh, we're going to look at it on the replay. It starts on the right side. Now watch the bouncing ball. Shep has to wait till it comes into the box. Barrett gets a foot to it and there the collision. Barrett falls through a little bit hard and the referee calls it. You see Shep already motioning for the penalty. You're not old enough to remember in the movies. Follow, follow the bouncing ball, are you? You see those old movies? The cartoons. With the, with the music playing, follow the bouncing ball. You are old enough. Well, I heard about it anyway. <laughs> Arrows playing down a man. Heinz Wirtz, number three in the lineup for the first time. Getting it over to Barrelich, who puts it in front. Here's Fink. His shot hits off the wall. Comes back out to Barrelich, who drops it off for Wirtz. A minute 20 left on the penalty. Kitson with a good block. And Wirtz chases it down once again. Gives to Joey Fink. Hollahan, the rebound, Mangione is in. Mangione on the man advantage makes it 3-2 in favor of Baltimore. And what a month of March this young man had. He had his first hat trick. He was selected as Baltimore's player of the month. Well, he's noted for his hustle, and he goes through two New York defenders to get here. Right jiggle right off the ball. It was a good ball played off the missile sign. You see it start on this side. Watch this setup. He won't go for goal. Joey's going to take it to his left. And now, Eccles straight for the missile sign. George Shep to the near post, leaves an open goal for Mangione, who rides Jingle right off the ball and sticks it in the back of the net. Good Man goal. advantage goal. Eccles gets his second assist of the night, and Nick Mangione comes up with his 12th goal of the season. And Baltimore has come back and regained the lead at 3-2, to two, and the team's once again at full strength. Renato Chilo will take the direct free kick. Paul Kitson had a lot of space, but the shot is blocked by John Collins, number 18. See, Kenny Cooper use a lot of people now in the closing stages of the half. He's got a tired team out there with all those penalties they had to kill off. When the team's tired, you just change players more often, and that's what Cooper's doing. Ravich takes it away nicely and gets it ahead now to Jungo. And Jungo's shot is blocked up into the crowd by Bob McAvan. You hear the encouragement from the Baltimore players? Baltimore comes up with a Joey Fink long ball to Paul Crosley. Rayovich had come for it, but Messing moves over himself. Here's Rayovich chasing it down on the corner and dropping it back nicely to Messing with 418 left in this first half. Baltimore three, New York two. Gene Strenisser ahead to Kitson. Sheila goes for it. Cleared back by Urkeley. 
This is Ketson. The jungle. Mangio takes it away. He's got a clear field. Messing, though, will come out and meet the ball. And flip it ahead to Strenesser. This is Jungle. Ravis. To Nikitovic. That'll be a foul on Baltimore on John Collins. Arrows put it back into play. Chila with 335 left in the first half. Arrows trailing it by a score of 3-2. to two. They trailed 2-0 after one. Jungle goes for a Gottenheimer with his Strenesser open net. Great save in front by McAvan. McAvan covered up with Gottenheimer way out of the net. That's the rule. Your goalkeeper leaves the goal. One defender has to drop back in, and McAvan did a fantastic job clearing it off the line. Rayovich boots it high up into the air, back to midfield. Messing plays it in the box. This is Jungle. Shot sails wide on the rebound. It comes over to Dan Counts, number eight for Baltimore. New York Arrows owner uh, John Luciani watching the game tonight in Houston. Bernie Rosen, the owner of the uh, Baltimore Blast, is uh, seated not far, too far down in front of us. You know who he's rooting for. You know who the fellow in Houston's rooting for. The shot by Nikita, a great save by Gottenheimer. Fantastic save by Gottenheimer. That was a rocket from Nikita from his left foot. Gottenheimer just got one hand on it. We're going to look at this on the replay as it starts from Tuchel. Now Nikita, right where he wants it on his left foot. A bullet, and you see it tail away from Gottenheimer. He was starting to his left. He had to reach back with his right hand. Great save. Remains 3-2 in favor of Baltimore. Dan Counts, number eight. Long ball and a good one. Played off the boards by Pollahan, and the Arrows come back with it once again. This is Gomez dropping it back now to Rabbit. Gazonis. Jungo. Gottenheimer. Risky move by Seth Gottenheimer, but he won that battle. And Baltimore has it. Mike Stankovich with a minute 40 remaining in the first half. Arrows trailing it by a score of 3-2. to two. Game has certainly opened up a little bit more. Both teams using a little less caution and going full tilt to both goals. This is Joey Fink. Jungle takes it away from Fink. Dan counts after Jungle. Foul will go against Baltimore's counts. Jungle drops it for Tuchin. Shot is blocked by Stankovic. Gazardis fires it. Billy has it again. Taken down by Joey Fink. Dan counts. Heads it back to midfield. And Barilich has it now for Baltimore. This has been a rough, aggressive game throughout. Baltimore, that before this game, was the second most penalized team in the league. They picked up four here in the first half, and on two of those occasions, the Arrows have scored. It is 3-2 Baltimore with 35 seconds left in the half. Joey Fink, 44 goal scorer, but he's been out killing a lot of penalties tonight, and he has not been in the offensive flow that much. Here's Gomez, had to wait a bit for that ball. Barrelich with him. Good move by Omar, got it to Tuxia, but the pass a little bit too hard. Counts comes up with a 17 seconds left in the half. Here is Billy Gazonis to Gomez, 12 seconds. Gazonis trying to tee it up back to Gomez, back heels it in front of Joey Fink, intercept with five seconds remaining in the half, and that'll be it. The horn sounds, ending the first half here at the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. It ended in a bit of a flurry for the Arrows, but they're unable to come up with the equalizer. And Don Popovich and the New York Arrows head back to the New York Arrow locker room. Trailing in the game by a score of 3-2. to two. So after the first half of play, it is Baltimore 3, the New York Arrows 2.
And we'll get back here to the Coliseum right after these words. Stand by. Spencer Ross and Roy Messing back here at the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. We're at halftime with the Baltimore Blast needed leading the New York Arrows by a score of three to two in a first half that was exciting. It was well played. It was very aggressive. There were all, was a lot of hitting out there in that first half. Baltimore took a two nothing lead and uh, all those penalties really kind of uh, nullify the edge that Baltimore had. Right? Absolutely. I think the word aggressive is being polite to say the least. <laughs> Very physical game and the referee right on top of it. It's a lot of penalty to see in one half and it changes the aspect of the game very much. It's a difficult coaching situation. Baltimore doing very well to get up to zip early in the game. The, the four penalties got New York back into it and now Ken Ken Cooper's facing a very difficult situation. His players are tired. New York is back in the game and starting to roll. Very fortunate to get the third goal to put him up before halftime. Well, Baltimore had that 2 nothing lead. Urkeley and Crosley had scored, and then the Arrows finally came back early in the second quarter to make it a 2-1 game. And then later in the quarter, they tied it at 2-2. Two and two. But as Roy mentioned, Baltimore came back to make it a 3-2 game at halftime. And the Arrows on the attack right here. Great. This is a great goal. It's a good setup from Gomez. He did a great job to get around the player the first time. Now he sends his high on the glass. Gottenheimer can't get it there. Jungle comes in on the back post and bounces it under the goalkeeper, Gottenheimer, up into the top of the box, and we see Gomez celebrating. He did a lot of work to set up that goal for Steve Jungle. And it was number 83, as you saw, for Steve Jungle. But uh, Nick Mangione came back for Baltimore in the closing stages of the first half. Both arrow goals, man advantage goals. Baltimore came up with a man advantage goal of their own. So at the end of the first half of play, it is the Baltimore Blast 3, the New York Arrows 2. And right now, from Roy Messing and Spencer Ross, we go to Chef Messing and the Skull Happy Day Shootout. Spencer Ross back here at the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. We're at halftime. The Arrows are trailing the Baltimore Blast by a score of 3-2. to two, And I am surrounded, surrounded by fans here who come out and see the New York Arrows on a rather regular basis. Laura Savage over here. This is Andy Langer. You will get to last because you're an out-of-towner. And over here is Bill Enoch. And uh, the reason this gentleman is here, this is his crutch. You talk about a royal, loyal rooter and... Having guts, too, he comes in with a broken leg, with crutches. His name is Wayne Sherman, and you're a big Baltimore fan. What are you doing here tonight? Well, we came up here to cheer on our team, and hopefully we'll get a win out of it. The game's going really good, and both teams are playing a really good game. So we hope something, we hope we get a win out of it. Well, you've got great fans here, and if these folks start up with you, you can just hit them with the crutch. Laura, how long have you been an Arrows fan? Three, four years. Three, four years. How often do you get out and see him play? Well, I've been five, six games a season. And you've seen mostly victories, right? Yeah, just about. It's exciting. And for you, uh, Mr. Langer, you get out and see quite a few Arrow games during the course of the season. Yes, I go to about uh, 10, maybe 15 games a, you know, a year, and I do my best to get out to see the Arrows because they have a great team. This is the time of year when it gets exciting because this is the time of the year you're moving toward the playoffs. Arrows have won three consecutive MISL championships. you think it's going to be a fourth? Yes, I do. I think uh, you know, teams like Buffalo and Pittsburgh are doing their best to try to beat the Arrows, and I think the Arrows are the, num are the number one team in New York. That's the team to beat. New York. I see you got your mug right there, right. and you talk about well, what uh, Langer just said in regard to uh, the parity, really. Uh, it is becoming a lot more fun as teams get a little closer to the Arrows, isn't it, Bill? Oh, yes, obviously. Uh, there's more competition, much closer games, it's much more fun. Not coming out and just seeing a definite winner, but seeing a good close game. Tonight's game, how do you evaluate it so far? It's been pretty good uh, back and forth game, uh, close, tough fighting. Tonight there's a crowd of uh, some 8,000 here. You go down to Baltimore and they sell the building out and this is indeed a beautiful sport. And you look around, you tell your friends to come out. Are you surprised that more of them aren't here? Obviously, yes, sir. absolutely. Uh, it's a good sport, I don't know why, but they're not coming up. They're missing a great show. And while three of the four people here are firmly convinced the New York Arrows will repeat as MISL champions, uh, the man with the crutch is not, right Wayne Sherman? Not that I'm not convinced. I just uh, hope that Baltimore does it this year, and I'm sure they have all the teamwork and the uh, the power to do it. Um, 
like I said, it's a, it's a close game. It's really a good game. And um, a lot of the teams this year look good. It's going to be really a close call down to the playoffs. It's really going to be close. I'll tell you, you talk about loyalty. Not only is this man here with a broken right leg, and we cannot get a shot of his cast, but honest cast, most people just have friends write signatures on it. He has players' autographs on it. He also has a Baltimore Blast logo on his cast. Can we get a shot of that? Lift your leg up. Look at this. We've got a man with a broken leg. We're telling him to move it around. There is the logo right there, right over the uh, right toe. Uh, I'll tell you, you guys say you're rabbit fans. Uh, Laura, if you broke your leg, would you wear a New York Arrow logo on your cap? Yeah, definitely. You would. Is that a unanimous decision? Yes, I would. Definitely. Okay, okay uh, Sunday, the New Jersey team's going to be here. You're going to be out and see it? Yes, I'm definitely going to be here on Sunday to beat them. New Jersey. Beat New Jersey. On April 30th, the playoffs get underway. That's when the arrows will open it up. But this Sunday, the regular season continues. Get out, join Laura, Andy, and Bill. This fellow is going to be back in Baltimore. And watch the New York Arrows in action right here at the Nassau Coliseum. Number one team. Number that's, one team. That's what the man says. Fill that mug with something. And we'll be back with the start of the second half right after these words. Spencer Ross and Roy Messing back here at the Nassau Coliseum. Halftime, the Baltimore Blast has arrived back on the field. We await the New York Arrows. 3-2 in favor of the Baltimore Blast. And they're one of the young, happy fans here at the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum out to see New York Arrows soccer. And I mentioned the playoffs just a short while ago. And the first MISL playoff game for the New York Arrows here at the Nassau Coliseum will be Friday night, April the 30th. And so for further playoff and ticket information, call the Arrows ticket office, 516 N-Y-A-R-R-O-W, 516 New York Arrow, or 692-7769, which amounts to N-Y-A-R-R-O-W. Friday night, April 30th, right here at the Coliseum, the Arrows will open up the fence of their MISL title in the playoffs. Both teams are back, and uh, Roy, as you were saying, uh, a factor here could be the physical condition of this Baltimore team. And yet they were the first team back in the field. Yeah, well, this is one thing to, w to wonder about Baltimore. Obviously a good team as we get a look at Don Popovich back on the bench. But Baltimore, obviously a very strong team in a slump, and you have to question why. What puts a team like that in a slump? One possibility, Ken Cooper drives this team very hard. At the beginning of the season, they show tremendous fitness. And perhaps in a 44-game schedule, they're starting to tire a bit. And there is Kenny Cooper. What a job he has done with this Baltimore team. He has made uh, believers of the fans in Baltimore, made believers of the city. They play in the uh, same arena that the Baltimore Bullets played in for many years. And you uh, old Knickerbocker fans, there's the uh, owner of the Baltimore team, Bernie Roden, and his wife, Fran, in attendance. Now, he should be smiling right now, but he knows there are 30 minutes remaining. As I was saying, though, they play in that old Civic Center where Dave the Butcher and Gus Johnson battled for so many years, and the Bullets could never get the city of Baltimore to put seats in the end arena where there's a stage. Yet this team has gotten the cooperation of the city of Baltimore, and I understand they're going to be. The city is going to come up with the Bucks to add those extra seats, and where the blast draws, they need them. We're underway here in the second half. The Arrows trailing it by a score of 3-2. to two. And Long Islanders, Sepp Guttenheimer, has the ball in goal. He's played well for Baltimore through the first 30 minutes. Peter Barrelich going for it. Rifles one of the rebound. Hollahan shot, sailed wide. Comes back out. Stankovic hits it high off the glass. And it comes back out to Gomez. Baltimore has come out flying here in the third quarter. Well, Baltimore comes out flying in the offensive third, and then as soon as there's a turnover, they all race back into the defensive third, where you see them now. All five players in their defensive third trying to crowd up the New York Arrows. It's been effective, or relatively effective so far. 14.05 left in the third quarter. Jungle with the ball, being double teamed, as he usually is, and it's taken away by the blast. This is Mangione. He's at the go-ahead goal in the game. 
Hollihan plays it off the wall, cleared out by Gomez. Karasi shoots at the center, but it's intercepted by Stankovic. Jungle right with him. Stankovic control. 13-35, left third quarter. 3-2, Baltimore. Good wall pass back to Danny Counts. Drops it from Angie. Oh, goal! Danny Counts to Mangione. Mangione second of the night, and the blast leads it 4-2. to two. They don't look tired. No, they didn't look tired there. Very good goal from Mangione. Starts with a wall pass. Now watch Karasi. He has to go with the man. Doesn't even make a move. This give counts, gives Counts a lot of room. Takes it, tees it up. Now gives a good pass square to the left. Mangione goes to the right of Chila. Shep was screened as the ball didn't see the ball until it came around Chila's left side, and it was already by the back post. Great goal for Mangione. He spun it around with his back foot to that back post. Makes it four to two now in favor of Baltimore. Urkeley going for it, but Gomez has it now for New York. Chips it ahead. Joey Fink in a foot race now. Number 14 for Baltimore. Comes over to touch it. Ball is knocked back, and Urkeley comes up with it. Has Crosley on the right. 18 for the first two goals. Good move by Urkeley. Fires the save by Messick. On the rebound, Shep clears it back to center where Gomez has it. Gomez tries to chip it ahead, but it is knocked down by Baltimore's John Collins. 12.50 left third quarter. It is 4-2 in favor of Baltimore. Urkeley to Crosley. Crosley save. Messing. Rebound Strenesser. This is Jungle. Gomez. Good ball to Jungle. But Gottenheimer got out there, was tripped up by Jungle, and it comes over to Crosley. Jungle, though, worse for it. He is still down in the far corner. And Baltimore moves up with Joey Fink to Crosley. Plays it off the glass, and the rebound is in by Urkeley. Crosley and Urkeley once again in the first quarter. It was Urkeley to Crosley, and then Crosley to Urkeley. And here it is Crosley once again to Urkeley, and Baltimore leads it 5-2. to two. Certainly a good goal from Urkeley, but New York playing very poorly in the back. Nothing Cavill can do there, but look at Tuxia. He's got five yards inside the box, and he's only three feet from the net. We'll see the ball start here from the middle of the field. Changes sides from Fink. Now, as he takes Cavill on, Cavill covers the goal, so he goes for the missile sign, hits it high on the glass. Look at Tuxia. He's got him. He's got five yards, and he's only three yards, with three feet from the net. Nothing Jeff can do. It's point blank range. Pat took it very well. So Pat Urkeley gets his second of the night, his 11th goal of the season, and for the second time on his goal, Paul Crosley picks up the assist, and it is now a 5-2 to two game in favor of the Blast. You got to look at Keith Van Aaron, the other Baltimore goalkeeper who's seen a lot of time this year. He's probably starting to warm up. Seth Gottenheimer shook up a little bit in the collision with Steve Zungel. The Arrows came out to start the second half, down by a goal. They now trail by three. Baltimore scored the last three to break a two-all tie, and the Blast leading it 5-2 to two with 12.02 left in the third quarter. This is Stankovic. Liverage giving him trouble. Mike Stankovic, number five. Last time we saw the blast in Baltimore, Stankovic was hampered with uh, some strained ligaments. Looks healthy tonight. Barilich puts it up in the air. And Val Tuxia plays it now for New York. Ahead to Liverich on the left wing. Strenesser. To Kitson. Liverich. Mangione chases and comes out with the ball. It's a two-on-one. Has Barilich on the right. And he's looking for Barilich. Feeds it off the wall to Barilich. Liverich was right with him. Barilich puts it through. Mangione! Cleared out by Liverich. He saved the goal. It was rolling in ever so slowly, and Liverich finally got there. Yeah, yeah. That's it, Mark. Well, Mangione deprived of the hat trick by Mark Liverich. You gotta look at it here. This is some wild action in front of the net. Barrel. It's a new three little chip. Now Shep comes out. 
gets a piece of it or else it was in the net right there, but it spins it up and slows it down and Liberts with a great save, races back and pulls it off the line. Back live now, great effort by Mark Liberich. Baltimore's Mike Stankovich gets it ahead now to Peter Barilich. 10.42 remaining in the third quarter. Baltimore with a three-goal lead at 5-2. New York cannot sit back and wait now. They must come and win the ball. Here's Dan Counts, number eight. Drops it back to Stankovic. And Baltimore in no hurry, but a little early to start playing this kind of game. They're in a good flow, and they've got good rhythm, and you just completely take yourself out of it when you start doing this kind of thing. That can be true, but it is very tempting. They're up 5-2 in New York. When they have the ball, they might as well hang on to it. Make New York play. Make New York come to them. Here's Paul Kitson back to Strenner. Arrows moving it around. Kitson. Katakalidis. And Guttenheimer has it. Distributes it out nicely. Stankovic trying to move around Rayovic. Nine minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The Arrows are trailing five to two. Out in front it comes. Kitson in the seventh and gets it delivered. Kitson streaks down the right wing. Stankovic tries to break it up, but Kitson has the ball. To Gazonis. Little Billy. Number six. Sheila blocked in front by Barrelich. Bad ball by Gazonis. And Baltimore counterattacks now with Danny Counts taking the center on a three-on-three. Drops for Barrelich. Gives the Fink and the save is made by Shep Messing. Great save. Hard and low to the back post and Shep held on to it in the crowd. Here's Rayovic to Chila. Back to Rayovic. 8.45 left third quarter. Arrows are trailing by three, five to two. Dragon Nikitovic, number 12. Rayovic. Nikitovic. Jungle. Wall pass. Nikitovic plays it off the wall. And it comes back to Chile. The one thing about a great team, and the arrows are most certainly that. Down three, you don't panic. There are still 23 minutes left in the game. You still play your normal game and try and get them back one at a time. The thing about it is New York hasn't just heard about it or read about it. They've done it so many times. They've scored so many goals in a short period of time. They know it can happen. They've done it. And the key is patience. Baltimore comes out with it. Joey Fink, who has been held in check tonight, 44 goal score, sixth leading score in the MISL. Here's an opportunity for Urkeley, here's an opportunity for Fink. But he couldn't play it off his chest cleanly. Here's Urkeley, a shot blocked by Chila. Urkeley goes for it again. Seven and a half remaining in the third quarter, 5-2 Baltimore. Joey Fink in close quarters. Rayovich goes after Fink. Fink still controlling, firing, save on the rebound. What great control by Joey Fink. Tremendous skill. That's what makes Joey a very dangerous goal scorer. We, Here. See, we see two very contrasting styles of attack. New York likes to play the ball with feet. Baltimore always goes to the boards. Joey just then trying to get a shot at the missile side. Makes it very hard for the defenders when they have to spin around and the attacking players to just race forward for the rebound. Here's Jungle. Nikitovic tied up with a good sliding tackle by Stankovic, and the Arrows will chase it down. Newest addition, Mike Gravich. The Tukshu. This is Jungle. He's around McAvan. He fires wide. On the rebound, it comes back to Stan Karasi. Six and a half remaining third quarter. 5-2 Baltimore. Val Tukshu. Nikitovic to Stan Karasi. Back to Tuxia. Mangio marking Tuxia. It comes in front. John Collins chips it up into the air. And this is Urkeley. Back to Collins. Six minutes remaining. Third quarter. 
Three goal lead for Baltimore. Five to two, Paul Crosley. Pirouettes at midfield and gets around. Karasi, good ball to Herkley. Plays it off the wall. Manji Yo just trying to chip it over the head of Messi, but it deflects up into the crowd. Nick got a little too cute there. Well, he knew that the players were going to start heading for the ground. Chef running to the back. He was trying to wait and put it over. We'll get a look at it here. First, a good shot from Eric and now a deflection. Now he wants to wait for the players to go to the ground. Machia spreads himself in front, and he goes over the top. Five minutes, 50 seconds remaining in the third quarter, and the Arrows trailing it by three goals. Five to two. We'll get back right after this. At Chemical Bank, we've spent years developing programs to help our customers. But now, we need your help. Our branches have been plagued with an overabundance of $20 bills. Twenties that, without you, will have nowhere to go. If you'd like to take one home, simply invest in a Chemical six-month Super Saver certificate, and we'll give you a 20 on the spot. Please, won't you help? here at the Nassau Coliseum. Five minutes and 40 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Arrows trailing it by three goals, five to two. Stan Karasi, who has scored one of the arrow goals tonight, number eight, and uh, Nick Mangione, number 19, in the white jersey, who has a couple tonight for Baltimore. Here's Mangione. Jungle made a move around Stankovic, Karasi on the rebound, and it's cleared up into the crowd. A first half that saw Baltimore down a man on four occasions, the Arrows down a man on one occasion, and here in the uh, second half of play, we have yet to have a penalty. Baltimore had two man advantage goals. The Yaros had one. Nuxia taking it away from Pollahan. Gomez in front. Stankovic clears. Nuxia jungle goal. a classic New York goal start to foul two it's going to be three men working the ball in the box Gomez he's going for Zungo on the back post he's blocked he wins the ball back plays it to Tuxa plays it first line to Zungo and the classic New York arrow finish Steve Zungo spins it high to the near post as Seth Gottenheimer goes to the ground watch the control here this ball is going for Steve Zungo. It's blocked. It comes back to Gomez. Now, one time to Tuxia. One time to Zungo. And first time, look at that open spot high. And he puts it right there. Gottenheimer gets a piece of it, but not enough. Great goal for Steve Zungo. Zungo second of the night is 84th of the season. Arrows are back in it at 5-3 with 4.49 remaining in the third quarter. 10.06 the time of that goal. Zungo from Tuxia. And the arrows have narrowed the margin to two. Makes a big difference being 5-3 as opposed to 5-2. The next goal is a very important goal. Here is Jungle. McAvan chasing him. Goal! There's the next goal. The unit scoring machine, Steve Jungo. When a player crosses the red line, that's the time when a goalkeeper usually tries to steal a look to see where everybody is. Jungo rifles it. Gottenheimer was still on the near post. Just crosses the red line. Gottenheimer doesn't expect a shot at this point. He's still checking. He's all on the near post. Steve rockets it. You see it dip and hit the turf just as it reaches Gottenheimer and under his arm into the back of the net. He gets him when New York needs him. What a goal from Steve Jungo. So a pair of jungle goals in 18 seconds, and he does it again. Steve Jungle, incredible. Steve Jungle has scored three goals within a span 
minute of 37 seconds. And the Arrows have tied it up at five and five. And listen to this crowd. The crowd's going wild. The scoreboard clock is printing. Wow. And that's all I can say. Wow. You see the defender get caught. You can't get start caught behind Steve Zirgo. He waits for the goalkeeper and then spins it to the back post. Battenheimer did well to cut down the angle. Zirgo, a tremendous job in finishing. Finds that back post. And congratulated by his teammates. Three goals. 37 seconds. Unbelievable. So we're tied now at five and five. And here's Jungle again. 4.03 left in the third quarter. Here's Mangio. It comes back to Stankovic. Gomez. Counts was with him. Here's Jungo. Beautiful ball and a goal for Leo. Steve Jungo can score. But he gives the ball up when he has to, and he did there, and Clavillo with a goal to make it 6-5. to five. What a goal. A lot of credit to Omar Gomez. The New York crowd loves it. Gomez is fouled twice here, but he has possession, so the referee calls play on, and there's the advantage. Jungle joins the goalkeeper. Clavillo, a fantastic run and a perfect ball right on his foot in stride. Great goal for New York. You see Gomez being fouled here. The referee sees New York has advantage, so he lets him play on. Jungle takes the ball, waits for the goalkeeper. Now he slots it to the backside. Great goal. Fernando Clavillo. His first goal of the season, and welcome back, Fernando. So the Arrows with four goals within a span of a minute and ten seconds. Three by Steve Jungle in 37 seconds and three by one individual in 37 seconds. Far and away, a league record. Kenny Cooper has to be saying, what's going on here? We had you by three, we're down now by one. Cooper went to get a drink at the back of the bench and he came back and look what's happened to his team. They, their heads have to be spinning now and I feel for Seth Gottenheimer hasn't touched the ball in the last three goals. Ball gets him chasing for the arrows. Gottenheimer gets it ahead now to Mangio. But a bad ball intercepted by Strenis, who gets it to Jungle. Jungle chips it into the corner to Kitson. Back outside to Tupcher, who fires high. Two minutes, 51 seconds remaining in the third quarter of play. And the Arrows with a 6-5 to five lead. And what a display of offensive firepower and excitement. The kind of excitement you see when the New York Arrows play here at the Coliseum. And you can get out and see these Arrows this Sunday against the New Jersey Rockets at 2.05. And then a week from tomorrow against the same Baltimore team on the 18th, Philadelphia's in town on the 25th. The regular season at home closes out against Pittsburgh. The phone number for ticket information, 516-NY-A-R-R-O-W. And the playoffs get underway here at the Coliseum on the 30th of this month. There's Don Popovich, the Arrows coach. Believe it or not, he's smiling. Oh, what a turnaround for being down. 5-2, to two. Jungle scores at 10.06, Jungle at 10.24, Jungle at 10.43, that's three goals in 37 seconds, it's tied at five, and then 33 seconds later, Jungle beats Flavio, Steve might have had a shot himself, but he gave it to Fernando, and the Arrows lead it by a score of 6-5, to five. we have 2 remaining in the third quarter. By how quickly confidence can be shattered because at this point Baltimore appears a little bit confused. Well, if anything's going to confuse you, that'll do it. Four goals in such a short period of time. Here's Mark Liberick on the rebound. John Collins drops it back to Gottenheimer with a minute 44 remaining in the third quarter. Arrows lead it by a score of 6-5. to five. Hercule goes for the ball. Liverett tried the sliding tackle and missed. 
Ripley again. Rayovic comes up with it for New York. To Chila. Ahead to Stranison. Here's Crosley. Crosley tonight with a goal and two assists. Oakley with two goals and an assist, giving it to Bob McAvan. McAvan shot on the rebound. Oakley saved by Messing. Took the hat trick away from Shot by Count sails wide. McAvan goes for kind of a dangerous high kick. The play continues. Dan Counts with 48 seconds left in the third quarter. Seth Guttenheimer getting it ahead now to count. 40 seconds remaining. Hercules. This is Lou Nagy, number 21. Joey Fink. The counts back to Fink. Loose and front. Gibson clears it out. Liverage drops it back to Spencer. Long ball to Gibson broken up at the last possible moment by Stankovic. Super save by Shep, and he gets it ahead to Kitson. Four seconds left in the quarter. That foul will go against Dan Cowles. Okay. Yeah. on the ground. Also got the wind knocked out of him. We'll see Bob Baldwin, the trainer. Visual timeout on the field. We've got to look at it here as Dan Counts and Paul Kitson both go for the ball here. Here comes Rayovich. He gets that thigh right in the right in the rib cage. Rayovich being attended to by Bob Baldwin. And uh, what a comeback to the New York Arrows. It looked like he did get kicked in the rib. Shep has made two saves in the last two minutes. There were, there were absolute goals, tremendous saves. You see Mejia giving direction to the other defenders. Three seconds left in the quarter. Baltimore just try and chip it up toward the goal, and they do. Messing punches it away as the horn sound, ending the third quarter. A third quarter, which saw the Arrows go from down 3-2 to down 5-2, and then a four-goal flurry in a minute and ten seconds to give the Arrows the lead at 6-5 to five after three quarters of play. So we'll get back here for the fourth quarter at the Coliseum right after these words. It was 5-2 Baltimore. Kenny Cooper on the last bench thought perhaps things were looking pretty good. But then Steve Jungle at 10.06 of the third, Jungle at 10.24, Jungle at 10.43. That's three goals in 37 seconds. It was tied at five, and that wasn't all. Because 37 seconds later, here came the arrows again. Certainly a lot of credit to Gomez. Look at the balance and the strength. He's fouled. He maintains advantage, gives the ball to Jungle. Now Jungle will draw the goalkeeper. Gottenheimer comes out. He closes down the entire goal. But there's just enough room for Jungle to slide it to Clavillo right in stride. Sends it into the open net. A great goal for Fernando Clavillo. And the Arrows with a 6-5 to five lead. And uh, take a look at that. That is uh, the younger one. Is Billy Gazonis' daughter with the Arrow cheerleader. Billy yeah. Gazonis' daughter here. And you mentioned uh, that uh, Gottenheimer came out. Well, he literally did now because he has been taken out of the lineup. And Keith Van Heron will take his place. And as Roy says, the best goalkeepers come from uh, the New York area, Long Island. Here's another one from Huntington. Keith Van Aaron, a native of Brooklyn who grew up in Huntington, Long Island. A 6-5 to five game as we start the fourth quarter. The Arrows out in front by one. And a fresh goalkeeper in there for Baltimore. This is Paul Crosley, number 16. Machia chases it down. Here's Tuxia, Mangione right with it. Gazonis to Nikitovic. Jungle to Nikitovic. Gazonis is all alone. Here's Billy. Back to Tuxia. 
Bad ball and cleared back to center. Cook should get the set on it. Here's Gazonis. The key to it. Gazonis out in front, jungle. Billy Gazonis made it happen, and jungle put it away. Incredible Steve Jungle. His fifth goal of the night. Watch Billy fight for this goal. He comes in. He doesn't hesitate. He doesn't go for goal. He hits it right off the, the MISO sign. Steve controls the ball and into the open net. Tough waiting for Keith Van Aaron to break into the game. This is an excellent ball from the key to the tier. Now Billy gets a touch of it and fouls it in. Now he reads the rebound. He knows it's going to come across to the right, so he fouls straight in. A bad pass back to the goalkeeper. Billy intercepts, hits it into the boards, gives it to Jungle. Open net. He's there again. One more time, Steve Jungle. An incredible scoring display. Jungle now with five goals, looking for six. He had one in the second quarter, three in the third, and one here in the fourth. I was talking to Shep this morning about what, how Steve would react to being chased with his scoring title. He does have a 20-point or 30-point lead over Stan Jalecki, but Jalecki is closer than anybody else has been in a long time. Jungle is reacting pretty well. Five goals and one assist. But the most incredible thing about it, the way Jungle bunched the three in the 37 seconds in the third quarter. And brought the arrows back from a 5-2 deficit to tie it at five. Then he fed Clavio for the go-ahead goal, 6-5. And now gives the arrows a two-goal margin. That man with the ball, number seven, Steve Jungle. Coach Popovich has felt the jungle was a little tired the last four or five games. He has a tremendous stretch in St. Louis and Wichita, and then a bit fatigued in the next three or four games. But he expected him to come back into it within the next few days, and it seems to have happened tonight. St. Louis game, he had five also in a 6-5 arrow victory. A game in which the arrows at one point trailed by three goals. Here's Joey Fink. Urkely hits it high, had an opportunity of messing out of the net. Katakalidis gets it ahead now to Karasi. As Jungle on the left and Machi out in front, Jungle goes for it and it's cleared out. Good ball for Karasi to start that. Machi, he was looking for Jungle. Karasi with 12.05 remaining, chased by Dan Counts. It'll be a foul. Might well have been a two-minute, I mean, flagrant push-off by Dan Counts. That's called the frustration shove. Well, he's having a few words with the referee, but to no avail. He's got to do more than talk now. His team has really been struggling, dropping five goals straight. Jungle on the dummy play, and uh, Karasi puts it up into the crowd. Karasi apologizing. It was a good idea. He was going high for the glass so Jungle could run on for the rebound. Just went a little bit too high. Keith trying to calm his team down, trying to let him know they're not really that far out of it. And they are not. They are down by two, seven to five, and still a lot of time remaining. Twelve minutes and three seconds. Here's Renato Chila to Karasi, bad ball, taken away by Nagy, who gives it to Heinz Wirtz. Wirtz has not played much tonight. This is Chila. Bad ball, Wirtz intercepts, Gomez after him, and Messi comes out of the net. Wirtz still with it, chips it off Shep's head, and now Messi comes up with it. Great job by Shep, out of the box, two saves out of the box, and then worked his way back in and made a tremendous save to cover up. Jungle okay. dropped it back that time for Gomez, and then straight toward the goal. Take a look at Shep, comes out with his feet, Wirtz gets a piece of it, now Shep with a face, just trying to cover up, he can't use his hands, he was out of the box. That's using your head, Shep. Back live, Wirtz gets it to Crosley, blocked by Clavio. And here's Fernando. Well, at this point, has the game winner. 
The goal that gave the Arrows the 6-5 lead. They lead now 7-5 with 11 minutes remaining. Jungle to Gomez. Gomez fires. Jungle rebound. Van Aaron comes up with a save and flips it out to Mangio. Nick Mangio. Two goals this season. Puts it in front. Karasi deflects it. Mangio looks for the rebound. Back out in front and Crosley comes up with it. This is Mike Stankovic. Ten and a half remaining. Lavio going after Stankovic. Karasi comes over to double team and the arrows take it away. And Jungle gives it right back. Stankovic. Crosley and Crosley just flicked it home at a beautiful feed and it is now 7-6 to six, and Crosley has his second goal of the night. Counts does some good work, a little extra effort from Dan Counts, he's the assistant coach, gets by and now goes for goal, sends it into the middle, two players there, Crosley all alone, puts it onto the back post, nothing Chef can do. You see the initial effort from Dan Counts, pushes it by, now fights by Karazi, destroys the defender towards him as Steve races back to try and cover in the middle, can't go enough. Chilla left alone with two men, just takes a touch and puts it right on the back post, taken very well by Paul Crosley. So Crosley with his second goal of the night, and the Arrows' lead is now down to one at seven to six. There's Crosley in the center of your screen. Arrows with the ball, Mark Livery comes forward and fires, and the rebound, it comes over to Danny Counts. Counts trying to clear it out, Joey Fink goes for it, Arrows control, Karasi to Gomez. This is Karasi again, chipping it up into the air. Dan Counts has it. Sheila to Gomez. Gomez colliding with Counts, and that'll be a foul on Dan Counts. And the Arrows will get the free kick coming up here. You see Gomez come in, go to the inside, then pushes it outside. He's beaten Counts all the way, and Counts just puts his shoulder in the way, charging, obstruction, call, and a free kick for New York. Dan Counts in his fourth year in the MISL, second with Baltimore, and as Roy mentioned, the assistant coach of this class team. Here's Pat Erkeley. He's got two tonight. His shot blocked by Chila, taken by Karasi, ahead to Gomez. 9-20 remaining in a 7-6 in favor of the New York Garros. Leverich getting it to Gomez. Gomez with a good move, fires, good save by Van Aaron. Rayovich comes up with it for New York to Gomez. This is Leverich. McAvan, good sliding tackle, and it comes over to Miguel Falardo. Falardo making his first appearance in the evening, number 15. Puts it in front, nobody there except the blue shirt, Val Tuccia. Gomez to Strenesser. Eight minutes, 45 seconds remaining, 7-6, New York up by one. They trail 5-2 in the third quarter. Well, it becomes a little deceptive. New York has scored five of the last six goals, and you lose sight of the fact that this is a very tight game. I think Baltimore has finally realized that they're playing. Gene Strenesser to Kitson. Takes a while to recover after being bombarded for four goals in a minute and ten seconds. It's going to take, take more than a while to recover from that. <laughs> Counts, chips it back to Van Aaron. Baltimore had that five to two lead, and then Jungle scored three in a span of 37 seconds. And just a few seconds after that, Jungle set up Fernando Flavio. Here's John Collins, long balling it. Rayovich getting it to Strenesser. With 7.50 remaining. Three on three for the Arrows. Liberant. Ozuna has been off for the last two minutes. He'll probably stay off another minute or so and then come on for the remainder of the match. Don Popovich giving Jungle a little bit of a rest. A deserved one. Should we figure out how many goals Jungle would score if he kept scoring at that rate for an entire game? That'd <laughs> be about seven a minute. Seven times 60, that's 420. Here's Crosley. 
Good ball to Stankovic. And Stankovic just really tripped himself up. He was in alone. Save by Nelson. Jeff comes up big. Very good save by Chef at a very important time. Here's Urkeley. Double team that Tuxia you, takes it away with 6.48 remaining. Messing just trying to clear it out. Arrows up by one. 7-6. 6.40 remaining. <laughs> Tripping call on the blast. Arrows will put it into play. Now Tuxia on the left of your screen. This is Billy Gazonis. Machia back to Gazonis. Ahead to Kitson. Kitson loses control. Mercury drops it back to Crosley. Collins. Off the wall, Mercury's shot goes up into the ground. And 6.19 remains here at the Nassau Coliseum. We got a good one for you with the New York Garros leading the ball to both last by a score of 7-6. Michelob brings you the seven-day weekend. Windy City style. The city's alive seven days of the week. And Chicagoans make every one of them special with the smooth and mellow taste of Michelob. Michelob at Booth One. Now that's my kind of night in the town. Steve Jungle with a five-goal night. And the New York Arrows with a 7-6 to six lead. And Jungle with that big burst in the third quarter, three in 37 seconds to tie it at five and five. And we have six minutes and 10 seconds remaining now. Out in front, Kitson. To Jungle, tries to return it to Kitson. Jungle again, hustling for the ball. Jungle with great control around Stankovic. Gazonis, Dan Counts, trips him up. And Baltimore comes back. Here's Kitson. Jungle now with 87 goals and 50 assists. That's two on the assist mark off the MISL record for a season held by Jordan Christensen. Here is Jungle, tripped up from behind by Nick Mangio. Took his shoe off. Jungle looking for a two-minute penalty. He'll sit for a moment and put the shoe back on. It's always very dangerous when a player's taken from behind. You see Mangio just comes across and clips his heel. Might not even have been intentional. He's just coming across behind Steve, trying to get goal side. Steve loses the shoe. It's time to tie it up. And there, look at the score. And the time, 5.15 remaining as play is back in. 7-6, New York by one. Baltimore, as we mentioned, had lost seven of its previous 11. Kitson taken down. Paul's got a lot of speed, and if he checks in, he creates space behind him. Counts caught short as he fouled Kitson into the check. Then as Kitson turned, he just shoved him to the ground. Paul asked uh, referee Wichak, how many more times before we get a two-minuter? A two-minuter? A two-minuter. That's uh, coining a phrase. They don't teach you that at Yale, do they? No. <laughs> if I had stayed long enough, maybe they would have. <laughs> 4.53 remaining. Arrows 7, Baltimore 6. Baltimore came into this game with a record of 22 and 13. Five and a half games behind the Arrows, just three behind Pittsburgh, two in the loss column. So this is a big game for Baltimore. 
Jungle to Kitson. The wall pass back to Jungle. Sheila to Karasi. This is Jungle. Mike Stankovic right with Jungle, who drops it off, but it's intercepted by Crosley. 4.29 remaining. John Collins comes forward to Urkeley. Urkeley trying to move around Machia. Good defensive play. Excellent work by Machia. Never taken by the by the fakes. Maintained his speed, maintained his position, and won the ball. Very good job from Machia. Here's Karasi with 4.10 remaining. Kitson. Yes, John! To Jungle. Karasi. Joey Fink drops it back. Fink has really not gotten into the offensive flow tonight. And part of it, I guess, Roy, that first half with all those penalties. Absolutely has a tremendous effect. Fink was on for all the man down shows. Baltimore looking for the equalizer. John Collins with the ball. And Van Eric comes out of his net to chip it ahead. Kenny Cooper has utilized the tactic of pulling his goalkeeper very, very early. He's played four quarters on three or four occasions without his keeper. Hey! And his team has wound up getting the better of it. Three minutes, ten seconds remaining. Yes, it, it is a tactic that Ken Cooper has employed on numerous occasions. It'll be interesting to see if he'll do it tonight. Obviously, what would have to happen is Cooper would have to call a timeout when his team is in possession of the ball, either on a free kick or in the goalkeeper's hands. Here's Crosley going for it. The best time to really do that early is when you're down four or five, and it doesn't matter if you lose by seven or eight in a one-goal game. Far different. You wait till the last minute. 2.50 remaining now, and we're getting close to that. Tuck shot, and it's now a two-goal game. With a rifle, right foot makes it eight to six, New York. Tucha had two bullets in the last game against Buffalo. Makes a big difference here tonight. Take a look at it here. It starts with Karasi. Now goalkeeper Van Aaron has a practice of going to the near post and then going back post as the player shoots. Just as he went, Tuxer went high to the near post. Watch Van Aaron come to the near post and as soon as Tuxer winds up and shoots, Van Aaron starts to go to the back post. It goes high over his shoulder. A rocket from Tuxer. Really nothing Keith could do about it. A great goal. Number 12 on the season for all-star defender Val Tuxer at 12.15 from Stan Karasi. And the Arrows now lead it by two, eight to six. But well, Baltimore has pulled their goalkeeper. They had the opportunity to do it before the start of play. So now they'll play with six players all going forward. Here's Danny Counts. Joey Fink puts it on net. Messing looking up. Gives it to Karasi. Two minutes, 19 seconds remaining. It is now a two-goal game at Baltimore without a goalkeeper. Here's Peter Barrelin. The count got under the ball and fired it up into the crowd. 2.05 remaining. See all those banners hanging there, MISL banners, National Hockey League Islander banners, the home of champions here, the Nassau Coliseum, Arrows upcoming home games this Sunday. The Arrows against New Jersey. And then a week from tomorrow night, the same Baltimore team. It's going to be a great rematch Sunday afternoon on the 10th and the 18th. Philadelphia's here on the 25th. Pittsburgh, for ticket information, give the Arrows a call. NY, A-double-R-O-W, area code 516. Val Tuxia getting tied up by Nick Mangione. And the foul, very obviously, against Mangione. Tuxia around Mangio, a minute 40 remaining. Here's Nikitovic. That foul will go against Dan Count. Well, we could have let that foul go. Nikitovic did remain, uh, maintain possession of the ball, but he decided to call it tight, let him know the referee still had control of this game. Fernando 
Mark Lavio, who came up with a goal that gave the Arrows a 6-5 lead. The first time they led in this contest, here is Strenizer. And Baltimore on the attack, Nick Mangio. Last time the Arrows played this team in Baltimore, New York was forced to go to overtime before winning it this time. Mangio puts it up into the crowd. He was looking for the hat trick. He scored twice. And there it is, a minute remaining, 8-6, New York. Baltimore will have to pull out the proverbial stops in this final 60 seconds. A look at the Arrow bench. There is confidence in the air, but anything can happen in this game of indoor soccer. And we saw it with Mr. Jungle coming up with three goals in 37 seconds. Peter Barilich on that ball that was shot toward midfield. Was kicked up around the head inadvertently by Gene Strenner. Uh, Barilich is okay. He uh, moves to the far side of your screen. He's right in the center now. Baltimore, Stankovic. They need a goal. They need it quickly. Mangio chips it up and it goes far and wide. It'll be a goal kick coming up for New York with 46 seconds remaining. Well, Shep has to be confident now, 46 seconds to go, and he's two goals up, but he saw what happened at the other end. I don't think it can happen against New York now, though. That is a record, as I mentioned earlier, the announcement just made to the crowd. Four goals in a minute and ten seconds. Here's Jungle, looking for a sixth of the night, a double hat trick. 31 seconds remaining. Arrows eight, Baltimore six. Barlett to Stankovic. Counts back to Stankovic. Tackled away. Jungle goes for it. Counts comes up with it with 12 seconds remaining. Fernando Clavillo, eight seconds remaining. The Arrows are gonna win it. It'll be their 10th victory in 11 tries. Three seconds. And we got a whistle and play stop. Three line uh, An offside pass, three line. As Urkeley hanging down the opposite side of the field. And there's the man of the hour. The man of the week, the man of the month, the man of the season. The man of the year in the MISL and the year. The seconds tick down, but there are three seconds remaining, and Bill Maxwell looks up at the clock, says reset it down to three. He's had a tough job tonight. And handled it well. Called the penalties in the first half and calmed things down in a very aggressive physical game. One second remaining, that'll be it. So it is all over here at the Coliseum. An exciting evening, an exciting victory. Kenny Cooper and Don Popovich with handshakes. The Arrows have beaten the Baltimore Blast. And handshakes all around. The final score, the New York Arrows 8, the Baltimore Blast 6. And we'll get back to the Coliseum right after this. Spencer Ross and Roy Messing back here at the Nassau Coliseum, a game which saw the Baltimore Blast open up a 5-2 lead in the third quarter, and, and Mount Jungle erupted with three goals in 37 seconds to tie it, and then Jungle feeds Fernando Clavillo four goals in a span of a minute 10, six five arrows. Jungle winds up with five goals, and uh, just an incredible display by this man who was just rewriting every possible scoring record. Well, I can't say it any better than the scoreboard printed it. Wow, it was unbelievable. It's one. It's a show to remember. It's one for the record books. Four goals in a minute and ten seconds from the Arrows, but more than that, the three goals in 37 seconds. It, it's hard to even talk about the game, because that's what we're going to remember tonight. Steve Jungle, absolutely incredible. And he did it with finesse. He did it with, with velocity. Came down one time on the left wing and uh, just completely caught uh, goalkeeper Gottenheimer off balance uh, by firing a left-footed shot from about 20 yards out. He did everything. He's 
He, he took a shot that no one expected, put it right on the back post. Next one came around behind the defender, went right into goal, showed his tremendous finishing ability. And then more than that, later on, the fourth goal in that series where he took the goalkeeper out of the net and then laid a perfect ball off for Fernando Clavillo. He's a team player as well. He does everything. Just a, a great show for us tonight. 50 assists for uh, Jungle now. As we mentioned, he's two off the league record of 52. And a lot of people forget the fact that this man not only scores goals at an incredible pace, but uh, he feeds his teammates. You know when you're out there in the field with Steve Jungle, you know you're going to get the ball. Well, he's done a lot for his teammates, and all the other players on the forward line know it. They know that Steve Jungle opens up for him. He draws a lot of attention out on the field, and more than that, he's able to serve them with tremendous balls, and he did it tonight, and that's what makes this Arrows team so incredible, so awesome. So the Arrows win another one, and they'll be back here at the Coliseum this Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock. You get out and see New York Arrows soccer. They take on the New Jersey Rockets, and that does it for a Friday evening. We hope you've enjoyed it. The final score once again, the New York Arrows 8 and the New Jersey Rockets 6. For Roy Messing, Spencer Ross saying so long from the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. The New York Arrows have been brought to you by